We have gone ahead and drawn a picture of this ball rolling off the roof. What we'll do is mark a point right here, and this is where the ball is going to initially launch itself off the roof. And we want to identify the X and Y coordinates of that ball's position. So we've drawn a Y axis and an X axis superimposed onto the diagram. And we can see from this picture that the ball initially has an X coordinate of zero and a Y coordinate of 4.5. The 4.5, of course, is because that's how tall the roof edge was. So we can mark that point as 0, 4.5. And again, we keep in mind that the 0 is the initial x position and the 4.5 is the initial y position. And then what we want to do is begin to organize all the given information into the following chart. In this chart, we have a column for the x direction and a separate column for the y direction here. And then we've listed out the parameters that we need to keep track of. So we'll start here with the initial x and y position or the initial x and y coordinates, and we've already noted that. So for x it's zero and for y it's 4.5 meters. Now, if we look at this row in the chart, we have the final x and y coordinates. Now, the ball is going to land somewhere over here, so hopefully we can see that the final y coordinate will simply be zero. So we can put that into our table. We do not know the final x coordinate. In fact, that's one of the items that we are looking for. So for now, we'll just call that x. And we'll just make a little note that that's unknown to us. On to the initial velocity. We all know perhaps that the initial velocity in the x direction is going to be the initial speed times the cosine of the given angle. Let's be a little careful about the angle, however. Notice the angle is directed below the horizon. So we have drawn that initial velocity vector below the horizon. And from our reference line here, we can see that the angle is actually measured in a clockwise fashion. So that 20 degrees is directed clockwise. But of course, in physics and mathematics, clockwise angles are negative. So what we're trying to say here is when you do the initial velocity in the x direction, go ahead and do the initial speed of 4.55 meters per second and multiply that by the cosine of negative 20, not positive 20. So we'll have 4.55 meters per second cosine of negative 20. And then the initial velocity in the y direction will be the 4.55 meters per second times the sine of negative 20. On to the final velocities. We don't know the final velocity for the y direction, so we'll leave that as an unknown. It turns out we actually do know it in the x, and the reason we know it in the x is because the velocity doesn't change in the x direction. And therefore, we can put the same velocity as the final as it was for the initial. Basically, what we're saying is the acceleration in the x direction is zero. There's no forces acting in the x direction, so there's no change in the velocity, and therefore the acceleration is zero. For the y direction, of course, the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then finally, we do not know the time in either the x or the y direction. So once you fill in all of the known information, the next thing you're going to want to do is try to find some of the unknowns, and you'll be using the equations from kinematics. Let's take a look at those equations. And so here are those equations, and it turns out that we're actually going to be using equations for the y direction first. And we're going to do that because what we really want to solve for first is the time, and it will turn out that it's easiest to do that in the y direction. So we're looking at this set of equations right here, and this middle one will turn out to be our friend for this particular question of finding the time. Let's see why that is. So delta y, of course, can be rewritten as the final y coordinate minus the initial y coordinate. And then this will equal the initial velocity in the y direction times time plus one half acceleration in the y direction time squared. Now we can begin to fill in the known values. Remember that the final y coordinate was zero and the initial y coordinate was 4.5. The initial velocity in the y direction, we wrote that out as 4.55 times the sine of negative 20, but why don't we go ahead and actually punch that into a calculator. So 4.55 sine of negative 20 would be negative 1.56 approximately. That would be in meters per second, times the time plus one half times the acceleration in the y direction, which was that negative 9.8 value, and then times the time squared. We'll simplify a little here. We'll have negative 4.5 on the left side, and then we can also multiply the 1 half by negative 9.8. This will give us negative 4.9 t squared. 
Now, this is a quadratic equation, so we have to use the quadratic formula, unfortunately, so we'll add the 4.5 over to the other side. We now have zero is equal to the following. Let's rearrange the terms in standard order. We'll have negative 4.9t squared minus 1.56t and then plus 4.5. Now, of course, the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. This number right here in front of the t squared is your a. The coefficient of t is your b, and the constant term is your c. So we will go ahead and plug those in. We'll have negative negative 1.56 plus or minus square root of negative 1.56 squared minus 4 times negative 4.9 times 4.5 and this will be all divided by 2 times negative 4.9. You're going to want to carefully punch this into your calculator and when you do so you'll get two values because you're going to have to do one that is a plus and another one that is a minus. Let's take a look at those two answers. And so you will end up with negative 1.13 seconds as well as positive 0.81 seconds. Of course, time cannot be negative in this context. So the correct answer for the amount of time that the ball will spend in the air is the 0.81 seconds. And that was indeed one of the items that they asked us to find was the time that the baseball spends in the air. So we've got that. We just need to find the horizontal distance from the roof edge. So basically, the question is asking us for that final x coordinate how much distance it's covered horizontally so let's actually apply the same equation but this time of course in the x direction so expanding delta x into x minus x naught equals initial velocity in the x direction times time plus one half a x times squared will allow us to find this now recall that the acceleration in the x direction was zero so this whole term right here, once you plug zero in for ax, is going to drop out. It's going to become zero. Also recall the initial x coordinate was also zero. So you are left with a very simplified equation of x equals initial velocity in the x direction times time. Recall that the initial velocity in the x direction was the 4.55 meters per second times the cosine of negative 20. So why don't we just punch that into our calculators. 4.55 cosine of negative 20 is 4.2 8 approximately. So you have 4.28 meters per second multiplied by the time. And we just figured that out to be 0.81 seconds. You multiply these out, and when you do so, you will find that the final x coordinate is about 3.47 meters. So that is how far the ball will have traveled horizontally. So we have both answers to the question.